it's a, it's a, um, the, the ability to come to work with this group 10 months uh, and, and every single day and just enjoy every one of them is, is, is uh, mind-boggling. And uh, it's, it's um, something I'll never forget, and I think it's something that uh, the people of Terre Haute you know, we'll, we'll never forget either. It's, it'll be right there with that, um, you know, the 79 group in terms of, you know, man, what a, what, a, what a great, you know, what a great run, what a great journey. And people will talk about, you know, where they were when it happened. And these guys have forever etched themselves in, in history and created an incredible legacy. Thanks. Bye. Any questions? No players are not coming out, so yeah. this will be the last chance to get to ask any basket questions. Coach, I apologize if this has been asked, but just well, how did you see that Dre Davis play unfold the go-ahead layup there for Seton Hall? Uh, we got uh, a, you know, I think then we wound up switching if I if I remember correctly, and then he drove it, uh, spun, and and um, you know got his shoulders back, created the separation, the spin, and made a made a, a, a good move, get off the glass right there. Um, you know, they're they're really good, you know, downhill point of attack team. You got to do a great job of sliding your feet and. Keeping them in front, and uh, um, we just, we just, you know, the last four possessions we couldn't get a stop. You know, we gave up two offensive rebounds at 77-70. Could have got a chance there to, you know, maybe get some separation. They come down, got called for a foul, which was a tough play. You know, to make it seven. They made two free throws, and then uh, Dawes makes a three. Um, we've done a pretty good job of keeping him down. He makes a big three, and. Um, you know, and then the last play there, I mean, Davis just that, that spin and, and, and made a tough move. I think, um, you know, got the, got, you know, we got switched. Like I said, Juwan getting switched on to him and, um, you know, ISO and just, you know, good, good player making a good play. And, you know, we just, you know, we just, uh, on our end, you know, we had, you know, to close a game, you have to be able to do it, you know, and we just, we just weren't able to, we didn't get anything to go offensively. We had four pretty good looks. Uh, they're in our wheelhouse, we felt like, and then we, uh, you know, we, we had four chances to get stops, and we just couldn't couldn't get one. With the shot selection, would you like to see more two pointers? Are you comfortable with this team with with firing up the threes there? No, nope, I'm comfortable with it. I mean, you know, Robbie's made some monster ones uh, all year from the top of the key. Got two great looks that, you know, uh, the the shots we took and the people who took them. I'll live with that. Swope's three from the corner, uh, Julian's wing three. Um, those were those were quality looks that are that are inside of our wheelhouse. Of course, you know, I mean, you could get it too. I mean, if there's anything, you know, I got to go back and look. Is should we have you know taken more time to get into them? But the, you know, those four shots, the last possession, uh, they did a good job. I think you know, like the, the pass a little bit off target, um, you know, and then I, you know, from my angle, you know, looked like it may have been a foul on the three there on when Swope went up to shoot it. Um, he got it back, and, and then you know Ryan got that look. But it was so deep. I mean, but it was online. Thought I had a chance, and, and it just you know veered off there at the end. But the four looks prior. I mean, that's kind of the, the shots we're going to take. I mean, um, and I thought they were within side of like you know what we do inside of our wheelhouse. I didn't think we were forcing or rushing any of those. And you know we had made a bunch of them in the second half. We just you know couldn't get them to go. But again, it's it's, it's you know that wasn't what cost the game. It was it was. You know the last four possessions, not being able to, to get stops, and, and and that's where you got to be able to close with your defense and your rebound. Did it feel like fatigue was ever a factor during this game tonight with some of the turnovers, some of the misconnections on passes, or anything like that? Or? No, I think I think we were just probably a little bit amped up. I think second half we were we were better with it. I thought I thought, you know, we got outside of ourselves a little bit. We were trying to hit some home runs and had some really you know bonehead turnovers in the first half. I thought early in the second half we had. Two turnovers in from there. I think we turned over three times the rest of the game, but no, I don't think it was fatigue. I mean, I think we, our guys have played a lot of minutes all year. They played um, in, in big time games, and so it wasn't that. It was just I think we were we were probably trying. You know, we were, we were trying to hit home runs early and, and and trying too hard. It wasn't a lack of effort or lack of competitiveness. It was actually the opposite. We we're just trying too hard to make plays and trying to squeeze plays that weren't there. And once we kind of settled in, I thought we got into a good offensive rhythm in that second half and. You know, I mean, I, you know, we had had, uh, uh, you know, with 77 there with, you know, three minutes to play. I thought we were in pretty good shape to, to close it out. And I thought our offense second half was once we stopped turning the ball over, was pretty good. Coach, people have said the Sycamores have helped save the NIT with this magical run, huge crowds. Obviously not the finish tonight, but what do you think this ISU run with these fans, this team has done to help rejuvenate the NIT? Well, I think, you know, you hope, um, like I said, this team's a throwback in every way. You know, they, they took this NIT not as a – you know, like a, a consolation prize or a second tier deal. They, they've approached it the way they've approached everything else. And that is, you know, we're going to go all in. We're going to put everything we have into it. And that's why uh, the locker room was as devastated as it was tonight when, when you walk in there, because uh, we truly, you know, 
gave it everything we had. They laid it all out there together. And, um, you know, if, if that's brought people back, like, to me, you know, NIT, you know, it's, not, it's obviously a um, – it's not what you go into the season going for, but but when you have a chance and, and you have a group like this that really loves to play together, loves to compete, um, that that enjoys being around each other, you know, those are the type of teams that play in April because at this point of being together so long, um, you really got to love each other and love love competing to, to and playing together, being around each other to to you know have the type of success, type of run, and win these kind of games we've won to get ourselves to this point. Okay, sure. uh, you mentioned Isaiah's toughness this year. Mm -hmm. How much of an improvement do you see out of him as a player this year? What's his potential? Oh, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's terrific. I mean, uh, he certainly has. Uh, when he's healthy, he's one of the best players, you know, in, in the Missouri Valley. He's playing, you know, on one leg and uh, scoring, you know, 19 points tonight against a great team. And, you know, you look at him here, you know, what he did against Drake in the, in the conference championship game. He's always... Um, you know, but if you look at before he really got hurt, you know, uh, the Michigan State game, he was the best player on the floor in a really high-level game. I think once Isaiah, um, you know, gets healed up, um, the year of experience he's had, um, guys tend in this system to make big jumps year to year. I expect both he and, and Ryan to be, you know, exponentially better. Uh, just like you saw with Julian year to year, Robbie, I think they'll make those same type of jumps. Uh, that those guys have made, and Isaiah, I think, is going to have a, you know, he was terrific this year, but I think he's uh, he's going to be vastly improved and, and hopefully healthy, and if he's healthy, uh, he's, as, he's as good a player as there is in Missouri Valley. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. This, uh, this is a painful situation for you, for the team, for the fans, but it's been a great season. What do you want everybody to remember about this team? Just hopefully, uh, you know, that they were they embodied everything good about you know college sports and what we love about sports, right? I mean, they, they played the right way, they they competed the right way, they had great competitive character, um, they 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 you know really I thought you know embraced the community. I think they embraced the fans. I think the fans embraced them. There was this incredible relationship and connection that that doesn't really exist most places. Um, the fans lived and died with us. Um, we had some amazing experiences, and these are, you know, memories that, you know, uh, I know I'll take with me forever. Um, I know these guys, these players will take with them forever, and hopefully these fans do. Like, the, the, you think about this run, I mean, going back to, you know, the Bradley game at home, the Drake game at home, uh, clinching the, you know, the Missouri Valley title with Murray State at home, uh, turning the Enterprise Center into Holman Center West. Um, the, the NIT games, SMU, Minnesota, Cincinnati, coming here to Hinkle for two games. I mean, like, it's just been a magical ride, and the fans have made it uh, even much more so, the fact that they've been so committed, um, you know, to, to our guys and so committed to the program, and they're having that mind, body, soul experience that we are, and, and uh, it's, it's beautiful to share it with, uh, you know, 9,000 other people and, and a whole entire community, and I hope that's what – you know, our, our fans, everybody takes from this season is, uh, you know, the, the joy and the, and, the, and the unification that sports can bring. Um, you know, there's a lot of things in this world that divide. Uh, sports tends to be a great unifier, and it can be a great, um, it's not the most important thing at any university, but it's the most visible at, at almost every university. And so uh, when, when you have a program that represents it with class and the way these guys did, it, 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 you'll, you'll see the benefit. Uh, in, in a widespread way uh, across a variety of areas at Indiana State. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, guys.